One of the monitors showed what was left of the inner circle. On screen, the so-called corpse of Alfred Woden stood up, miraculously waking from his dirt nap, looking smug among his dead pals. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I didn't know how he'd pulled it off, but it was a pretty slick way to get out of all his promises. Most of what he had said fit too well to be a load of crap. What is your answer to those saying that he is actually providing a service long overdue to the city? This crusade nonsense has gone too far. He's out of control. It must stop. He will be stopped. That was Deputy Chief Jim Rivera from the New York City Police Department. Videotape lay on the desk. 
Nicole Horn had blackmailed the inner circle into silence. The tape came with a curt extortion note on a piece of expensive paper. I remembered Candy Dawn taping her clients in action on the side, selling the tapes to the highest bidder. And I was sure that kinky sex was nowhere near Alfred Woden's worst sin. But I had a feeling that when this was over, any collateral would come in handy. Woden had left me a present. Woden had taken care of my mission preps with military precision. The critical areas in the Acer Corporation headquarters blueprints were circled in red. The president's office was at the top of the building, right below her penthouse suite. The elevators were controlled by a security computer, part of the mainframe located underground below the building. The high rise was sealed as tight as a sci-fi fortress. Nothing seems to stop Acer Corporation's phenomenal victory march. Incredibly, the stocks are still rocketing. Worried experts already see a danger in the company's success. Some have gone as far as to say that Acer Corporation is about to become an even bigger monopoly than Microsoft ever was. Next, the season finale of The Void. Captain's Log, development update 2001. After a brutal flame war, verdicts triggers were left out of alignment and forced to stop to make repairs. This can take some time. The only data our engine officer has seen fit to give is when it's done. Engine room, this is Captain Broussard. Aye, aye, Captain. Scott here. She's busted, I'm afraid. Without the next generation 3D card, we cannot make the jump to 3D reality. What in the name of? We're under attack. Battle stations, all hands. Oh my god, can these ATP readings be correct? Uh, they have curved surfaces? Scott, give me everything you've got. Compensate with light map smoothing. Captain, our main reality farm is down. We're stuck with good old shame. Shame. What a shame. Damn them to hell. No one preys on us. When the abyss gazes into you, grin madly back, I say. Oh, Captain, I value your opinions above anything. It's time to show them they're dancing with that big boy.
Z, going out with guns blazing. Never heard of it, no? Okay, newer stuff then. The usual suspects, where Spacey walks out of the police station and suddenly loses his limp. Or hey, seven, where Brad Pitt gets to that head-sized blood-soaked cardboard box. Now I know, freaking zombie team is out of space. Drowning in blood was cool. I dreamed of revenge. Those dreams were always nightmares, of coming close and then failing. Now I was close. I had a name to guide me, Nicole Horn. I had nothing to lose. The inner circle had quite a track record. The inner circle had quite a track record. Project Valhalla had not been the only thing the Inner Circle had been involved in. There were rows of cabinets full of files. The Serpentine Secret Society went back a long way, always pulling strings from the shadows. I couldn't say I was sorry. Woden's move in some Byzantine power game had cut the Circle's membership roster to one. The old man wanted me on cleanup duty. It was my mess too.
CIA, FBI, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Sure, good for a practice run. But this, working for her, oh, this is the real thing. The money's astronomical. And best of all, you get to kill any scumbag who gets in your way. License to kill, like James Bond. Engaging hostile. him down. Shoot to kill. Let's finish this. Mine wasn't the most original approach to the problem. It wasn't as if it hadn't all been done before. An eye for an eye, the first principle of revenge. Old as dirt, still going strong. The cardinal rule in going after someone with an intention to kill was not to make it personal, which it almost always ended up being anyway. It did with me. I took my time cruising around the city in the snow. There was no hurry. I knew what I had to do now. I took my time thinking about it, building up the rage. When I was ready, I parked the stolen wheels at the front entrance of the Acer Corporation headquarters. Got out, got in, got cracking. I had a bullet with Nicole Horn's name on it. I had 10,000 bullets with the hag's name on them. She had ultra high tech security systems, enough mercenaries and weaponry to start World War III. There was no. New York disappeared behind a veil of snow. I had crossed the threshold. This was her domain, sleek and sexy and soulless, all glass and steel. A place of color-coded security key cards, metal detectors, and surveillance systems. Colder than a walk-in fridge, cold as a gun.
Mona, looking good. Max, we gotta stop meeting like this. It will be a cold day in hell before I let a narc cop stop me. Miss Sachs, do your job. Relax, Max. You're a nice guy. I don't kill nice guys. You're not bad yourself. It was different when Horn wanted Punchinello dead, to cut her ties to the Mafia. He deserved to die. The same goes with her. She's the bad guy here. Her sister was whispering to her in my favor. I knew the appetites of ghosts intimately. They hungered for revenge. Gunshot boomed and she fell down in slow motion. She was a nice girl, not really a stone cold killer. And now she was stone cold dead. Like religious fanatics or loyal samurai, Horn's private army was coming at me. I need backup. When the elevator came back down, Mona was gone. There was a lot of blood, but no body. Something clicked for the final time. My mind had never been so clear, as if somewhere high above the storm clouds were already gone, cold stars blazing from the black skies. Elevator access to the mainframe. From there, I'd be able to override the security locks and get to her office. Chopper was Horn's pet guardian, inhuman and flawless. It was stalking me. I'm not a cold-blooded killer. I'm a nice guy. I love my wife. I have two boys I'm very proud of. We just have to make the ends meet. 
And if that means I have to shoot someone now and then, hey, it's just my job from 9 to 5. Well, not quite from 9 to 5, but I hear you. were now offline. All bets were off. The elevator would take me all the way up. Seen from this height, the night seemed to stretch on to eternity. A hint of desperation had crept into the snowstorm, as if it was trying to get it all out before the end. Horn's personal computer was on. Next to the printer was a neat stack of expensive paper. Hacking through Horn's computer would have unearthed files of criminal plans, strategies for world domination, spy helicopter reports, illegal wiretap recordings, internet porno, all of the above. Take your pick. I really didn't care anymore. I had seen too much of it already. Valkyr had been meant to be a white-winged maiden that would lift you to a warrior's heaven, but it turned out to be a one-way demon ride to hell. The devil was in the drug. I knew. I had met him. And now I was going to kill her, the queen of the underworld who had tried to lift herself a bit closer to heaven with her drug money. No begging, no bribes. She knew better. Honor among killers. We who are about to die knew how this would end, in pain and suffering. All because your wife stuck her nose into things that were none of her business. The cops were coming to take me away. The sirens were like a bad conscience I couldn't shake. It's ridiculous you've made it this far. You won't be alive when they get here. Stop him!
daughter were necessary. Inevitable. It is done. You cannot bring them back. Nothing you do will make it any better. Send us assistance.
here as soon as the wind dies down. Don't like the look of that mast. dead. The final gunshot was an exclamation mark to everything that had led to this point. I released my finger from the trigger. And then it was all over. The storm seemed to lose its frenzy. The ragged clouds gave way to the stars above. Max Payne, this is Deputy Chief Jim Bravora from the NYPD. We've got the building surrounded. Throw down your weapons and lie down with your hands behind your head. Bit closer to heaven. The cops' voices were distant and mute. Break! NYPD! Okay. My ghosts released me from their haunting. Down below, New York City glittered like diamonds on black velvet. You gave us one hell of a ride. Take him down to central booking! You heard the man. Wilton was there in the crowd, standing by the sidelines. It wouldn't be over till the man with the patch would say so. He'd say the right words. I knew he would. He'd better. Woden grinned smugly. It was the grin of a winner. That made two of us. <laughs> 